Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, I'm Elizabeth. I'll be talking about East Monero Atomic Swaps today. Um, so yeah, a little bit about me. So yeah, I'm a software developer. Um, yeah, I've been working on East Monero Atomic Swaps for the past um, around a year and a half. Um, and yeah, I've been working in general on like blockchain protocol level development for um, five years or so. Um, cool. So yeah, today I'll talk about uh, the state of the swap, um, a little bit about the overview in the architecture. Um, a little bit of how to use it if there's time, um, and then the, the roadmap for the future. Um, cool, yeah, so just a little bit of background on atomic swaps. Um, so basically it's a P2P and trustless way to swap um, two native assets between different chains. Um, so the ones that are implemented in this case are ETH and Monero. Um, and then atomic means that either the swap is successful, so both parties receive um, their respective funds that they want to receive, or um, they both get their funds back. Um, and this is kind of like cryptographically guaranteed by the protocol. Cool, so yeah, so on the progress, so this has been deployed on mainnet for around two months now. Yay, so yeah, um, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, so yeah, so feel free to go try it out and use it. I'll have like the GitHub link and stuff in um, later slides. Um, yeah, so right now, what's my next slide? Um, yeah, so yeah, I guess huge thanks to first the community for funding the initial CCS, um, then also Magic for organizing and assisting with a second funding round, um, and also, yeah, thanks to all contributors to the code base and just everyone who's like tried to play around with it so far. Um, cool, yeah, and I guess, uh, Okay, yeah, I guess I'll talk about more about how the architecture looks like later. Um, but yeah, I'll go, I'll go into how the protocol actually works first. Um, so yeah, I guess this will be like the most technical part of the talk. Um, so yeah, so say we have two parties, Alice and Bob, um, and then we can say Alice has ETH and wants Monero, and Bob has Monero and wants ETH. Um, so the um, the swap has like a P2P network built in, so Bob will put up an offer on the P2P network and then Alice can then find it. Um, yeah, this was kind of like implementation specific. You could have like other mechanisms to find like an offer, like just like having a website or something like that. Um, so yeah, so Alice then takes it and then the swap is initiated. Um, and then each party has a secret value, so you can say like Alice's secret value is XA and then Bob's is XB. So for the success path, I hope this is large enough. <laughs> but um, yeah, so for the success path, at the start, um, Alice has to lock the ETH first. So there's a smart contract deployed on Ethereum, um, which Alice locks the ETH in it. Uh, Alice also um, pr um, provides commitments to the two secret values um, in that when she does that lock step. And then Bob sees the lock and then um, confirms that the I don't know, the commitments are correct and that kind of thing and the value, and then locks the Monero in um, an account on the Monero chain where the private key is the two, um, uh, the two secrets uh, summed together. Yeah, sorry for that, like, yeah, I need to fix that notation, sorry about that. <laughs> but it's the two secrets summed together. Um, and then um, basically at that point, then Bob, uh, or Alice will see the lock on, the, on Monero because she knows like what address it's gonna be locked in. Um, and then she'll call a function in the contract that basically says like, okay, Bob can now claim from the contract. Um, and then alternately say like Alice like doesn't see the lock for whatever reason or like she goes offline. Um, there's a timeout as well um, that will just like automatically trigger and then also allow um, Bob to claim. So then once the contract is essentially ready for Bob to claim, he'll just uh, call a claim function on the contract that um, the input is the swap secret. Um, and then when he inputs that, uh, it will then just transfer these to him. And then this is like the atomic part essentially. So when Bob reveals um, his portion of the swap secret or his swap secret essentially, um, Alice will now know the private key to the account that the Monero was locked in. Um, and then she can now go do whatever she wants with that. So yeah, that's, that's the atomic part essentially. Um, so yeah, so there's two possible refund paths as well if this if something goes wrong, for example, like someone goes offline. Um, yeah, so both parties do need to remain like online essentially for the duration of the swap. Um, so 
Yeah, so the first refund path is that Alice locks ETH and then Bob just like goes offline and then doesn't ever lock the Monero. So what happens in this case is that, um, so I mentioned earlier there was a timeout in the contract. Um, so when that first timeout is passed, that means Bob can automatically claim. So basically Alice will like wait until this timeout is like getting close. And then if no Monero has been locked um, and that timeout is like getting close, um, she'll just call a function on the contract that will refund the ETH. Um, and this refund function is like similar to the claim function in that it takes um, Alice's swap secret. So in the case that Bob did lock for whatever reason, um, but just like Alice didn't find out, um, then Bob will still be able to refund as well. And then the second refund path. Um, so yeah, so in this case is uh, that the case that Bob never claims the ETH. So, so the first step is the same as the success path. Success path. Um, both parties successfully lock, um, and then the contract becomes ready, but then Bob just like never claims for whatever reason. So there's a second timeout as well, um, where basically after the second timeout, the only possible move is that Alice refunds, um, and that, uh, yeah, Bob can't claim as well after the second timeout. So basically Alice will just like watch the contract and then see that essentially nothing happened until the second timeout. Um, Alice will then call refund similar to before, um, passing in her swap secret. And then say like, for example, say this is because Bob went offline or something, he'll come back online and then we'll check the contract, see that there is the refund transaction, um, find Alice's swap secret and then be able to um, regain the Monero that was locked. Cool, so yeah, that's basically the protocol. Um, yeah, there's like more docs on this as well, like on the GitHub repo or yeah, feel free to ask questions after. Cool, so yeah, I guess road to mainnet. So a little bit about what was implemented um, for the actual implementation. Um, yeah, so yeah, build the protocol itself is like relatively simple and like straightforward to implement, but when you, yeah, when you're actually trying to put it into like production, there's a lot more to consider. Um, for example, like what if someone stops their swap node like while in the middle of a swap or something like that? Um, like how are they going to recover and like, how are you going to find out like what steps they're at? Make sure they don't like lose the swap secret and like that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so the first thing here is like database and restart safety. So um, yeah, essentially you want um, in case the node shuts down at any point, um, the user should be able to recover like all the data. Um, and then yeah, also built-in Monero wallet handling. So the first iteration, you had to like run uh, Monero wallets. CLI separately, but that was like kind of, I don't know, a little bit not user friendly. So now it's like built in um, and it just like starts it and handles it for you. Um, and then yeah, it'll like automatically send the funds where you want them to go at the end. Um, there's also a relayer system. So um, due to the way Ethereum works, um, you essentially need to pay gas for every transaction. Um, but for example, say you're, you're Bob um, and you don't have any ETH, but you want to get ETH. Um, then how are you gonna pay for gas, essentially? So the relayer system, um, yeah, fixes that problem. You basically get someone else to pay gas for you and in exchange, they get like a little bit of the swap um, funds. Um, there's ERC20 support as well. So yeah, there's token support. Um, and then yeah, generally like bug fixes, UX improvements, testing. Um, and then yeah, also like a dedicated boot node program. So, um, so yeah, I'll talk about that a bit more later, but essentially it's like for people joining the P2P network. So yeah, so a little bit about the P2P network. So the um, the program uses a library called libp2p, which um, is, yeah, like it sounds like it's just like a peer-to-peer -peer library. Um, so it comes with a bunch of like nice features already built in. So you have like NAT traversal um, if you're behind a NAT. Um, it has like a DHT for peer discovery. Um, so yeah, so it's entirely like P2P and permissionless um, and decentralized, so you can just or run a node and, and join. Um, and like offer discovery is also um, entirely like P2P and decentralized as well. Um, yeah, and then, um, yeah, I kind of talked about this already, but essentially, yeah, everything um, for the database and restart safety, everything is, uh, or all this information that you need is essentially stored on disk now. So then if anything happens during the duration of the swap, you should be safe to restart it. Um, and then, yeah, relayer system. So, yeah, another aspect of the relayer system is that, um, yeah, it's also like bad for privacy if you have to like withdraw into or withdraw the ETH into an account that's like already been uh, used or whatever, like you already have ETH in it. 
So yeah, so the relay system is just like a good improvement for both privacy and UX. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so kind of how this works is that the relayers also advertise their services on the P2P um, network. Uh, yeah, similar to how like, um, yeah, people who are making offers will also advertise them. Um, yeah, they're paid a portion of the swap value in return. So yeah, so if you need a relayer, you can basically like in the program, it'll just automatically like search the, the P2P network and find one for you. Um, so how it works is essentially like Bob will sign a transaction, uh, the claim transaction, and then the relayer will submit it on, uh, on their behalf and pay the gas. Um, and then the contract will like check the signature and like that kind of thing and then transfer um, most of the swap value to Bob and then like a little bit to the relayer as like the, the fee. Um, yeah, so then now you can withdraw to a fresh account, which is nice. Um, so yeah, this is kind of, yeah, this is basically the same as like the success path, except like in the part where Bob is uh, claiming, yeah, he'll like search for relayers. Uh, say you find one named Charlie, you'll send, uh, so Charlie has to send like his payout address, um, like where the relayer fee will be sent to. Um, and then Bob will sign the claim data, which includes this payout address. So this is essentially like to prevent front running. Um, yeah, I found that during testing and that was like fun to deal with. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, now it's front run protected. Cool, yeah, so yeah, so addition, additionally, in, yeah, in addition to market makers, like relayers are really essential um, to part of the system. Otherwise it just becomes like, um, yeah, a bit of a pain to use, I suppose. So right now it's permissionless. Um, yeah, it's permission to join, um, and yeah, I'd highly recommend running one if you want because you don't need any Monero. You need like only a really small amount of ETH just essentially to pay for gas to start off, um, and you get like a little bit of a little bit of funds. So, yeah, I would recommend running one. Um, yeah, so so yeah, so went through a few different designs for this. So originally went with like a meta transaction compatible design, but the libraries are all in JavaScript, so. I didn't like that because the code is written in Go. So um, yeah, ended up like implementing our own little system, which is a lot cleaner actually, but in the future may move to EIP4337, which is like account abstraction, which is kind of like a standardized relayer system you could think of. Um, yeah, but I don't, it wasn't super ready at the time of launch, so maybe in the future. Cool, so yeah, and then last thing, uh, or one of the last things, boot nodes. Um, so they're used as an entry point into the P2P network. So every peer-to-peer -peer network needs to basically have like hard-coded addresses that the node will connect to um, on startup to basically enter uh, the network. Otherwise, I don't know, you just like can't get in. Um, so yeah, they have to be publicly known or hard-coded. Um, and also another thing is that, uh, yeah, like it's also recommended if you wanna run a boot node, um, so yeah, you don't. You can just run one. You don't need to have any funds. You don't need to like, yeah. You don't need to do anything. It's just like you're literally running like a node um, that helps with like the decentralization of the system. Um, just because more boot nodes is better in case any of them go down. So yeah, if you if you want to contribute, but you don't want to uh, like, yeah, you don't want to actually do any swaps or anything. You can also um, <laughs> run a boot node. Um, okay, yeah, and then a few like commonly asked questions that I get. So the first is, can the swap work on chains other than Ethereum? So yes, um, so it can be deployed on any EVM chain. Um, yeah, so like there's a smart contract like I mentioned, um, and yeah, like you can deploy this on any EVM, um, like as is essentially. Uh, but then also, if you wanted to deploy it on um, a non-EVM chain, you could rewrite the contract in whatever smart contract language um, that that chain is, is supporting. Um, so yeah, I, there, there's currently only the, the ETH like Solidity implementation, but you could theoretically deploy it on any like smart contract chain on one side and then narrow on the other side. Um, cool, and then another thing is that um, why can only Monero holders be market makers? So yeah, as, um, as you might have remember in the, in the first uh, protocol stuff I showed, so um, it requires the ETH holder to lock first. So basically, what, yeah, so why is there this like kind of one-way limitation? So essentially there's no refund capability on Monero. So that's the, the main problem. So this forces the ETH holders to move first um, because uh, like say you're, say the Monero holder locks, uh, moves first and they lock um, and then the ETH holder never does anything. Like how are they gonna refund? Like they can't. So um, yeah, therefore the ETH holder needs to move first in the protocol. 
Um, however, um, if say you have the ETH holder be market makers, i.e. like they put up offers on the network that can be taken, um, they can be griefed. So what this means is that uh, since they move first and they have an offer up, someone can just come take it, um, force them to lock, and then force them to refund because they don't actually do anything. And then therefore the ETH holder will then lose like a bunch of gas because it's like comparatively much more expensive to do all those steps. Um, so um, yeah, essentially, and then someone can do that without having anything at stake because the ETH holder moves first. So that is kind of the one way limitation right now. Um, so that only, yeah, Monero holders can put up offers on the network. Um, but yeah, there's hopefully maybe some ways to get around this. Um, yeah, kind of in research. So yeah, current, yeah, so if, obviously if there's any more questions, feel free to ask after, but hope that explained things. Um, cool, um, yeah, I think I have enough time for this. So yeah, I'm just gonna show like a little bit of like how it looks to run it. So um, right now it's like a CLI only. So yeah, so um, yeah, if you're comfortable with the terminal, uh, that's good. Um, yeah, we uh, tried to make it like really easy to run though. So hard to like mess up. So even if you're not familiar with the terminal, I'd recommend trying it. Um, so yeah, essentially first you just like build it and then you just run like the swap D uh, binary and then you pass in like an Ethereum endpoint. Um, so you can like, I don't know, run your own node. These people like, like remote <laughs> endpoints. So yeah, whatever. Um, so yeah, this will just run it and then you'll um, automatically connect to like the mainnet network. Um, and then you can also check like your balances. Uh, so the swap node contains um, but yeah, like an ETH private key and like Monero private key in a wallet. Um, so you can like check your balances, you can like easily uh, deposit funds as well. There's like QR code in the terminal, kind of cool. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so you can deposit uh, and you can like, there's also funds to like, there's also commands to like withdraw easily. So it's like basically like a whole wallet <laughs> in, the, in the program as well. Um, yeah, so then when you wanna um, make a swap, uh, or sorry, when you wanna make an offer, you can just do like swap CLI make and then your like parameters. So like how much um, you wanna put as the offer, your exchange rate. Um, and then the program also has like suggested exchange rate from like an Oracle. Obviously like double check it, but yeah, it's there. <laughs> um, yeah, and then once you've made it, you can see like the offer ID and that kind of thing. Um, and then to search the network for offers, you do swap CLI get offers. You can see offers on the network. Um, and then when you see one you like, you can, uh, oh yeah, so this is like also, uh, oh sorry, this one is for getting your own offers. <laughs> and then this one is for checking for the offers on the network. So yeah, this will show you, um, yeah, offers. Uh, and then when you like one, you can just do take and then pass the offer ID, um, the peer ID, um, which is like the remote nodes, like P2P ID, um, and then the amount that you're gonna provide in, in ETH, and then it'll, start the swap, um, and you can check your ongoing swaps as well. Um, yeah, it was just the ongoing command. Um, and then you can also check your past swaps with the past command. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Um, yeah, I don't have a demo this time because I didn't think there would be enough time, but um, if you want to check like my, Monero my Monerotopia talk from last month, uh, you can see like how it works like in practice. Um, Cool, so yeah, so a little bit of the roadmap for the future. So um, yeah, one thing that I um, definitely wanna add is like built-in network privacy. Um, so yeah, like I mentioned, it uses the P2P library, but there isn't really um, a good like built-in uh, privacy transport for it yet. So yeah, ideally we'd like to add that via like Tor or NIM or something like that. Um, dynamic relayer pricing. So right now the pricing, like the fee that's um, received when you do a relay is essentially fixed. But uh, if the gas price like pumps a lot, this is like bad because uh, you won't get as much in reward essentially because the gas will go up. So yeah, so essentially making that dynamic. Um, yeah, gas has been like somewhat stable lately, but yeah, in the case it goes up, we wanna um, increase the relayer fee. Um, and then a browser UI. So there is like sort of a UI you can run right now that's like self-hosted. Um, like it doesn't work great, but essentially, yeah, it hasn't, just hasn't been maintained as much. Um, but yeah, essentially um, would like to implement a browser UI that you can just like run um, either locally or I don't know, 
Ideally, you don't have to run it locally, but that's like a lot more complicated. But um, so you can use like MetaMask, uh, like a browser wallet or anything like that to do the swap. So you don't have to like deposit your funds like into the CLI. You can just like <clears throat> you can just use your normal browser wallet um, kind of methodology. Um, and then yeah, and then just like testing, bug fixes, usability, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so in summary, it's ready for use. Uh, yeah, we need Monero providers, we need liquidity providers. Yeah, so if you want to be one, definitely reach out. Um, yeah, we need relayers, um, and yeah, more boot nodes will always be good as well. Cool, so yeah, this is the GitHub, so it's athenorlab slash atomic swap, and then there's also a matrix room, um, ETH XMR swap. Yeah, so yeah, if you wanna check out the GitHub or reach out, um, yeah, feel free to do so. Okay, that's it.